Hi, I'm Robert Webster from 1UP IT. Recently I've been dabbling in the differences between the model view controller approach and the model view view model. Now, up until recently I had no idea what the difference was and I'm going to demonstrate them today with some different code examples. So for the model view controller, I'm going to be using jQuery and for the model view, view model, I'm going to be using Kendo UI just to show the differences and how they can achieve the same thing but in a large scale project how the model view, view model will actually be beneficial in deployment. Okay, let's go straight into the code. To demonstrate the differences between these two approaches, I'm going to create a new website within my digital structure but you can do this on your own, uh, your own platform and then I'm going to just add some simple JavaScript code to demonstrate the differences and this code will be made readily available. So I'm going to head over to developer.oneblankspace.com and log in. So you'll see my website from last time in here. I'm actually just going to create a new website I'm going to call this And you can acquire Kendo UI um, from the kendoui.com website. And this is going to show us our model view, view model approach. So I've just downloaded the free trial because I'm just evaluating this at the moment, but there is a commercial license available as well. Okay, for jQuery, I've covered in my other videos. Um, I'll just assume that you know how to install and use a jQuery snippet on your um, script. Okay, so I've created my website. I'm just going to attach some files. Okay, so for Kendo, these are the three files that I need. So these are CSS related and I want the web.min.js uh, file. Okay, so these have been uploaded. I'm going to reference them in my scripts. I'll check what this is 1469, this site ID. This is just required for my digital structure to function correctly. Uh, so I'll go into scripts and... So I'm gonna save my scripts. I'm gonna create a page as well. And I'm gonna make it the home page. And I'm not gonna put anything. I want to change my div layouts and all that kind of stuff. Should be a clean slate. New page source. So we have a clean slate. So we're good to go. The one thing that I haven't added yet is my own script. So I hit a refresh, then I'll be able to see that my Kendo file has been added and we can see that in here. So that's what I'm going to walk through today and just um, show the differences between them. I'm just going to close up all these functions. So this function here is just a, a function that I've set up which will basically call either the Kendo UI view model function or the create jQuery view controller model. So the first one we'll look at is the traditional create jQuery view controller, which is what I've been using in the past and what I've been fairly familiar with. So if I just open this one up, what I'm going to see is going to happen is I'm coming through, I'm creating my view UI. So from the view controller part, I'm creating my view. So I've just created a simple input which has a name, uh, which has an ID of name, value of John Doe, a button which has an ID of display greeting and a, a name of display greeting. So that is getting pushed into the HTML. I then come across and build my controller. So this becomes my business logic. So based on an event that's happening within the application, in this case it's a click on the display greeting ID, I am going to do what it, whatever is within this function. So let's run it and see how works. So what I'm, do I'm doing is just um, commenting out this here and I'm just going to minimize this and re-upload.
and it comes up auto populated with John Doe. Let's have a look at the, the DOM. So we've created a div, ID of view, input, pretty self-explanatory. Each of these things has an ID, which is what I'll come back to later and how it differs. Um, so if I click on display greeting, it comes up, hello, John Doe. If I just change that to test, hello, test. So the functionality, the obvious of what they're doing, is just doing a simple alert. Now I'm going to go back and run through the model view view model using Kendo UI. So I'm going to comment out this and I'm going to make this function run when we run the, run the application. In this instance we're actually creating an object um, which is our view view model the part where I was actually getting confused at the beginning was that view model is actually contained as one entity. Um, so we have model view view model, but model and view at the start of that term are completely separate entities, whereas view model is kind of combining the two together. Whereas you have a model view controller in the traditional sense, the controller is actually being replaced by this view model entity. So view model is one entity. That's the thing that kind of took me a while to get my head around. Okay, so we create a view model object and we're using the Kendo observable and we're putting a whole bunch of data in here. Now, the first bit is a field for called name and the second one, the second part, we have a function in here called display greeting. So we're assigning different variables within this object which will have bearing on the actual view UI which we'll come down to. Okay, so this function very similar to what we had previously. So if I look down here, we have this function but it's bound to a click, whereas here it's kind of just bound to nothing, it's just it's just called display greeting at this stage. So when we go through and create the view UI, the view UI is now a bit different. We're not tying each input element or each element within the DOM to an ID so we can reference it later as we did with jQuery down here. We're actually using the data bind attribute in order to give values or give references back which relate to the view model. So in this case, the import data bind, we've got a value of name. So name relates back to John Doe. Whereas with button, we've got a data bind, and we bind, a, instead of a value, we're binding a click, and we're saying run this function, which is part of the view model object, when this is clicked. So we don't have IDs, we don't have click bindings that we've got to do anymore. We do have to bind the view UI to the view model, which is an important step or it won't work. So basically we're, we're telling Kendo to bind this view element, which is the UI element, to this view model, which we have created. So if I go ahead and run that, Close out of that. Remember, I've already saved it, so I've changed the calling function. So, as you can see, looks very similar. The HTML or the the UI doesn't look similar because it doesn't have input IDs and, and things floating around everywhere. Um, but the functionality of the, the app is exactly the same. We have we have very two very different approaches here. We've got one using model view controller and one using model view view model. Both have exactly the same outputs, both are coded differently. That concludes my look at Kendo UI and how it 
can implement the model view, view model approach to your programming of web applications and websites. Um, there are other alternative methods than using Kendo UI, but Kendo UI looks like it's got all the applications that I need and it has mobile uh, support as well. The website content will be up and available online so you can check out the code. Please post any comments. If I've got anything wrong, please let me know. Uh, this is my first look, so let me know if there's anything that I've missed out. Thanks for watching. Bye.